remember that when a company uses the periodic inventory method, uh, cost of goods sold and adjustment to ending inventory is not recorded in the accounting records until the end of the period. At the end of the period, uh, the periodic method, the physical inventory account has to be taken uh, and applying one of our valuation methods, a dollar value to that ending inventory is determined. In our next problem, uh, we're going to determine the cost of goods sold using the periodic inventories method. I'm going to use exercise 8-3 to do this. We're presented with the ending trial balance for a number of accounts related to inventory and cost of goods sold. Uh, you're also told that there was a physical inventory taken and the value of that inventory we had on hand at the end of the period is $40,000. So first we need to determine the cost of goods sold. And we're going to use this worksheet to do that. We're going to take information given to us from these account balances and use them to determine the cost of goods sold. Let's first review how we're going to calculate the cost of goods sold without any amounts in it. We begin with the beginning inventory. To determine the goods that are available for sale, we're going to add in the purchases. Purchase discounts will reduce down, ultimately, the value of inventory. So they're going to be subtracted from purchases. Similarly, Returns of merchandise will also reduce down the ultimate inventory and, and freight in the cost to get the goods ready for sale will add to our inventory. So when we take the beginning of inventory, add in purchases, subtract out purchase discounts and purchase returns. We add in the cost of freight and other costs associated with getting a product ready for sale. That will give us the cost of goods available for sale for the period. In the periodic method, we're not tracking inventory every time we have a purchase. We're going to calculate the cost of goods sold using the cost of goods available for sale and ending inventory. We do that by subtracting the cost, uh, the ending inventory from the cost of goods available for sale, and that will give us our cost of goods sold. Now let's take a look at this problem. The problem tells us for the period we had purchases of two hundred and forty thousand. Purchase discounts for six thousand. Notice they're a credit. These are. This account, purchase discounts and purchase returns are contra to purchases, that is, it will lower the total of purchases, net purchases from a gross amount to a net amount. They'll, they'll, they'll act to reduce that. So, purchase discounts and purchase returns. Freight in is a debit, so that's going to increase the cost of goods available for sale. So we're trading the 17,000. Our goods available for sale is going to be the beginning inventory plus our purchases minus our purchase discount minus our purchase returns plus our freight in. So we'll begin our formula with the beginning inventory. We'll add in purchases. We'll subtract out Purchase discounts, subtract out returns, add in our freight and our goods available for sale, 273000 Our ending inventory is 40000 So our goods available for sale minus our ending inventory will give us our cost of goods available for sale. Cost of goods. So for the period.
in order to cre uh, create our journal entry uh, that will begin at the end of the period that will rec recognize the cost of goods sold because that is an expense account so we're going to increase that with a debit so our first entry is to increase cost of goods sold by 233,000. There are a number of different ways to handle inventory. At the end of the day, we have to make an adjustment that takes us from the beginning inventory to the end inventory. The first way we're going to do it is probably the simplest. That is, we're going to debit inventory for the amount of ending inventory that we have. And to offset that, we're going to credit inventory for the amount we had in the beginning of the period. So we have a debit to inventory for our ending amount, a credit for the beginning inventory. Next, we're going to close out our temporary accounts, purchasing, purchase discounts, purchase returns, and freight in. So for example, purchases has a debit balance. We have to bring the balance down to zero, so we're going to do that for the credit of 240000 Purchase returns has a credit balance of 10000 so to bring that down to zero, we have to debit it, 10000 Purchase discounts also has a credit balance, so to get to zero, we'll have to debit it for a balance of 6000 And then finally, our freight in has a debit balance, so to get it to zero, we're going to credit it for 17000 On the worksheet, we have a little check figure, a little formula that allows us to sum up the debit and the credit columns to make sure that they balance. Again, this is a journal entry, so hopefully it must balance. The second way to handle inventory would be to net the two out. In order to do that, we would take the ending inventory and subtract out the beginning inventory. So we began with 40,000. We ended with 32. That's an increase of 8,000. If we had did that, if we had subtracted ending from beginning and came up with a negative number, then we would be decreasing inventory. Since in this case we're increasing inventory, our debit is going to be to inventory for 8,000. If Ending inventory minus beginning inventory had given us a negative number, we would then credit inventory. So either way will work, they'll have a balanced equation. The net result will be an increase to our asset account inventory by 8,000. 